All right. Um, good to see everybody here today. This is my first presentation at a Civi event, so I'm excited for this. Um, I'm also excited to be representing the WordPress community. Um, and I think next year this room is going to be full. So, um, all right. So first of all, I'd like to really hear a little bit from um, an end user because I feel like um, a lot of people, you know, uh, are you know interested in hearing that perspective and hearing um, what the challenges are and how um, end users view Civi CRM and and as a tool and solution and so forth. So. I'd like to welcome Christy Wentz, who's the Executive Director of Drugs in Pennsylvania, to come up and talk a little bit about their organization. <laughs> Nate caffeinates me every day, so you know, I told him I would come up here and share um, what Drugs in Pennsylvania struggles were when I took over about a year and a half ago. I actually was writing it down just so I didn't forget anything. <laughs> Um, so my first day, they sat me down and um, made me watch these horrible trainings, which were PowerPoint presentations with this gentleman in this horrible monitoring voice. <laughs> and, um, and then I got an email that had all of my answers that I had answered in this quiz. And I said, well, what do I do with this? And they said, oh, well, you print that out, and then you type it all into SurveyMonkey. And I was like, that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my life, but I'll go with it. So that was like my first task. And they had months and months and months of users that had taken quizzes and their emails to enter into SurveyMonkey. So that was my first task. That was before I was in charge. I was the part-time person then. <laughs> I do not do that anymore. Um, so my next thing was we got a new member. And the new member process was very interesting as well. So the first thing you did was you made a copy of their enrollment form, you cut it with scissors, and then you used a glue stick <laughs> to glue it into a, a huge manila folder. Our filing cabinets look something like you would find at a doctor's office. <laughs> um, so after you did that, you had to enter them, that person in the website on two different Excel documents, into our app database, into Constant Contact, into QuickBooks, and then also in this folder, they gave me specific measurements on where I had to punch two holes so that the paper did not stick out on the outside of the folder. <laughs> and um, specific instructions for the size and font for the label. And then also in this folder, they printed every single email that they had with the member. The policy, we write drug free workplace policies. And then how they kept track of where they were at in the process with that member was with different colored stickers on the outside of the folder and little notes. So if a member called and said, hey, where am I at in my process? You had to go to the filing cabinet, grab the folder, and be like, well, you're a yellow sticker, so well, who knows what that means? <laughs> um, so that was, you know, very much fun. Um, emails. We're obviously never up to date because we were using constant contact, so if someone wasn't a member, no one was going in and updating it. Event registration, this one is fun as well. So event registration, we always did everything on paper forms. We send out 26,000 paper forms to teachers and educators. So once the paper enrollment form came back, you had to process the payment on authorize.net, enter it into QuickBooks, into two different Excel spreadsheets, into Constant Contact, into ACT, and you'd make two copies of the forms to give to the other staff so they knew what was going on. So, cue Nate, who's like an angel to me. <laughs> um, we've now implemented Civi, and now everything is all in one. We do event registration. Um, we're working on a step-by-step -step membership enrollment, which I believe we're using cases for. I could be making mm -hmm. that up, but he should think that that's correct. Um, we use it for all of our block mailing. We use it for the notes, we use the activities. Um, so it's just been a blessing to be able to move to something that is all integrated and away from um, multiple and various um, softwares and technologies. So I'm handing it back over to me. Thank you. All right, thank you for sharing that. Um, so, 
Director of Pennsylvania was my first introduction, uh, introduction to Civi CRM, as it so happens. Um, I worked with a lot of other CRM implementations over the years um, for, for in the for-profit industry, so Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, and that kind of thing. And um, obviously, we were looking for something that would have the features that Drug Free Pennsylvania was looking for that also would not be a huge ongoing cost for them. Um, and so Civi CRM uh, was kind of an accidental find. Uh, some, we were looking for a plugin that worked with WordPress. We tried seven or eight other plugins. None of them had the feature set that we were looking for. Um, half of them didn't even work. So um, Civi CRM uh, was really um, a surprise for me to find and see all of the features that it offered. Um, so what I'd like to talk to you a little bit, um, so that being said, um, as part of the um, open source community, um, I feel like um, there's always that need to contribute back, to, to also um, be aware of needs and improve. So, and that's the beauty of open source is that there are, um, you know, hundreds or thousands of developers as opposed to a closed community, can we hire another developer? Everybody can contribute to the project. So, um, I would like to talk to you a little bit about, now how many of you are um, end users? All right. Um, how many of you are uh, in integrators, developers? All right, okay. So uh, what I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, first off is um, what, why our choice was to focus on WordPress as our primary platform um, and then how that worked with Civi CRM. So effectively in-house, in uh, we refer to um, to this dynamic as Beauty and the Beast. So um, WordPress, you know, people, people will criticize WordPress sometimes as saying, well, it's just pretty, you know, it's whatever. Um, and, it, and it is, and it has a great user interface. Um, Civi CRM, on the other hand, has a wonderful um, backend engine and has a lot of features and that kind of thing. And so it does the hard work. And so, you know, we affectionately refer to it as the beast. All right. So, um, uh, taking a quick look at some of the things that WordPress is known for. Um, WordPress started in 2003 as a fork of another product um, and it was created by Matt Mongwig and Mike Little. Um, has a proven track record of success. Nearly 50% of the top million websites who are built on a CMS use WordPress. So um, that being said, that's 500,000 of the top million. That's a big number. Um, it's easy to use. Dashboards are simple and intuitive and based on non-developer feedback. And I think that's what's attractive to a lot of people is it's easy to get started with. Content management is king. So the core is built around managing content workflow from draft to edit to approval and publishing with role-based control and access. And of course that goes back to WordPress's foundation, how they started as a blogging platform and then expanded further as a CMS. Um, there's a huge community of, of WordPress uh, people. If you are an active WordPress user and you haven't plugged into a WordCamp um, in your area, they're all over and they're very helpful to go and learn information about WordPress. There's also a ton of support available because of that. Um, there's a ton of training materials, plugins and themes available for WordPress. Um, WordPress has search built in, um, very, uh, very well organized, very um, nicely built search tools. And so everything is searchable, um, which also means that they serve searches in an organized way, which makes them SEO friendly. So uh, Google likes the way that they have their um, search structure organized and indexed. Um, user roles. WordPress lets you define different roles for different users. Users can register themselves. And WordPress, is, just like any open source, is kind of like a snowball. It just keeps like absorbing and adding. So um, different organizations have developed different functionality for WordPress and then it's been incorporated into the core. So user roles is one of those things where they have um, member roles as a plugin um, that has continually becomes more integrated. 
Um, this is, of course, important with um, data about your organization um, needing to have different levels of role access based on whether someone's a volunteer or an administrator, a bookkeeper, any of those things. Um, WordPress, and this is uh, really um, interesting and important, but WordPress offers multi-site technology that's really easy to set up. So um, they use that technology on WordPress.com, which powers over 20 million blogs. Um, so it's very powerful. And of course, global sites use it, like CNN and the New York Times, um, to manage hundreds and thousands of sites. Um, bunch of other reasons, it has world-class security, extensive API, it's enterprise ready, um, interoperable uh, via XML RPC, automatic updating, their famous one minute install, which is more like 30 seconds, um, standards compliant, intersite communication, um, spam protection. So um, a lot of that is a result of the large community just keeps feeding back into it. So I find this kind of interesting and my mind is always working. So when I um, was introduced to Civi CRM, and I realized that Civi CRM um, had a lot of functionality developed for Drupal because of the age and um, maturity in the Drupal platform, and a year or two in the WordPress platform, I kind of started scratching my head a little bit looking at the different user base. Um, WordPress, like I said, makes up about 50% of the top million sites built on a CMS. Uh, Drupal is 5.8 and Joomla is 6.45%. Um, and so, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, sites that are built on WordPress, here are a few. Um, Best Buy, ESPN, Ford, IZOD, NBC, TechCrunch, UPS, USA, Today, and Van Heusen. Um, some of those are more news-based sites. Um, others of those, like Van Heusen and IZOD, are e-commerce based sites like stores and that sort of thing. So WordPress and Civi CRM, and I, I look at WordPress and Civi CRM as um, a, the perfect combination for a nonprofit organization. Um, I know I'm in a minority in, <laughs> in the community um, to, to some extent. Um, however, um, Civi CRM has all the power, functionality, and tools that a nonprofit needs to manage your organization well. And I think um, Civi CRM, uh, this is my understanding, is used by more organizations than any other open source CRM on the market. Um, I kind of took a peek and some of these statistics may be accurate or close. Over 100,000 downloads last year. Um, tight integrations with popular CMSs, integrates with Drupal, WordPress, and Joomla. Um, highest number of features developed for Drupal. So CRM is the only open source uh, CRM that I know of which has feature parity with the closed source um, CRM platforms that are subscription based and paid. In fact, it has more features in some areas. Um, a lot of them don't have built in uh, mass mailing capability or SMS campaigns. Most of them have to tie into another system to handle those things. Um, Many add-on features are available via extensions, and that extension marketplace just keeps growing as well. Growing community of support, um, 26 export, expert support partners in the US. Those are companies that are listed on the partner section of the website. Um, 57 worldwide, so uh, that's a pretty, pretty um, respectable number. Uh, robust and growing API, and this is really exciting. The API that WordPress has um, is continuing I'm, I'm sorry, that Civi CRM has is continuing to be grown so that you can integrate with other tools um, more easily and not break that integration you know, because of an upgrade or an update or something like that. There's no ongoing per user licensing fees. And this is um, really exciting, um, but it can be a little bit um, uh, deceptive if you don't also uh, understand the initial costs and some of the maintenance costs involved in getting up and going uh, with it. So it's not, you know, it is, it's a big deal because, um, for example, um, Marissa, who is my business partner and wife, um, worked for an organization who is a um, uh, uh, 
I guess national, regional grocery store chain. They had an internal uh, website where they kept track of all their departments and everything like that, built on IBM WebSphere, which um, is a per user licensing model. Um, so their cost for that software on an annual basis um, was between one and two million dollars. Whereas um, moving something like that to WordPress, um, which had the capability of handling that, would be no ongoing licensing fees, and Civicerum is the same. So when you have a large organization, or even a small organization, that kind of ongoing cost can really cut into your administrative overhead. So here's what kind of puzzled me a little bit, and this is not um, very good at representing the, the differences. Um, so <coughs> the blue is the percentage of Civi CRM users using a platform. So we have about 8% um, you know, of Civi CRM users. And again, these numbers may be a little skewed. I went based on downloads. So um, about 8% of Civi CRM users using WordPress, about 90% using Drupal, and um, you know, under 5% using Joomla. Um, in contrast to um, almost 50% of websites built on a CMS of the top million websites are built on WordPress, um, five and six for Drupal and Joomla. So um, this kind of keeps me up at night a little bit uh, because I keep thinking, how do we change this? How do we make this shift from, you know, not very many people in the WordPress community using Civi CRM to getting more people engaged and involved in what do they expect? What are they looking for? So top features of Civi CRM, uh, according to our clients and my understanding, um, is donor management, um, automated email and SMS marketing, event management, integration with CMS and front end forms, um, activity and interaction tracking, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, uh, membership management, import export capabilities, and reporting. Um, I don't think Christy mentioned this, but the system that they had previously to manage their memberships did not allow them to export their data um, with, a, with a front end tool. I'm sure you could do it through a database or something like that. But um, so having that capability of Civi CRM, being able to import and export your data easily, export your reports, uh, was really important to them. Now, top downers, um, so we're always looking for ways we can improve, right? Um, top downers, uh, high barrier to entry, which basically means it's almost impossible for an end user without doing a lot of research to, um, to just go install Civi CRM and get, get up and going. Um, installation and updating um, is a pain. I don't know um, if it's the same in other in the other CMS platforms, but in WordPress you have to overwrite um, via FTP um, the plugin files and then run up update script and so forth. Um, interface is, is a bit dated um, in a way, and, and I'll cover some of that um, in a little bit. Um, however, that being said, all of the people who have used Civi CRM um, have picked up on it very quickly and have really appreciated the features um, that it does offer. Um, it's not responsive for touch and mobile devices is a big complaint that we get is, um, well, I want to be able to call someone or add an activity from my phone. Um, it's not easy to do that. Integrating front-end forms and elements is not fun or easy. Um, there's, uh, I think there are some improvements on this, but um, simple forms are actually pretty good because they have short codes for front-end elements for, say, um, an event registration or something like that. So that's really great. But if you want a more complex form, um, styling that form or making it responsive is, is really difficult, which Drupal has a good um, answer to that. Um, it's not available in WordPress. Um, displaying data on the front end is a little clumsy. Um, and again, it has more to do with styling and, um, and um, st styling of that and how it appears on different size screens and touch devices. Um, no front end elements are responsive and so is not easy. Um, it's difficult to customize um, interface or dashboards based on user roles and needs. So you can restrict access to different um, levels, um, all right, and that's not that difficult. But let's say you wanted to set a dashboard 
um, that you want all your volunteers to have this specific dashboard. Um, each person would have to go in and set up their own dashboard, which is a one-time thing, but it would be nice if you could assign it by role or something like that. Um, so, the, so, again, once we get Civi CRM set up and running, our clients love it. It's that barrier to entry that I think is the issue for most people. Um, it just looks daunting to them. And so it's geek friendly. And, and again, set up an administration, not the, not the software. Um, it's not end user friendly. Um, so to just relate my own experience with that, um, I'll talk a little bit about this form later. Um, let me go back. Well, let me just cover this real quick. So this is an example. I was talking about how front-end forms are a bit tricky or difficult. Um, we wanted to get this form um, in a multi-page multi form. Um, this is an enrollment form that Drug Free Pennsylvania uses for the workplace programs. And we were able to add all of our custom fields that we wanted and that kind of thing. But to style the form was very, uh, very difficult. And so basically we had to uh, build this from scratch, um, develop and, and integrate with the database on the back end. However, um, we still uh, have a few issues with the um, fact that we can't um, validate the fields um, by page. So um, basically, you get to the end of the form and submit it. If someone missed a field, you go back to the beginning and go through again. So again, it's not completely intuitive, but it is something that we were able to build for them that meets their needs. Um, it would have been nice to have something like that that we didn't have to have a developer build for that. Um, so we need a different approach. And um, let me just back up a little bit and, that, and tell you a little bit. On your tables, there's a um, uh, little sticker. And it says UKU. All right, so this is a project that we've been working on in collaboration with another organization. Um, and essentially, the best way to think of this tool is that it is an, um, it's a ex way of extending Civi CRM into WordPress that's going to make it easier for WordPress users to use. Um, so I will uh, tell you a little bit more about that. Um, so um, a couple of the challenges that we face with Uku um, in kind of concepting this. Um, so backing up a little bit. Initially, um, I wasn't sure that we would be ready to talk about this. I was going to tell you about how I built the form for Drive from Pennsylvania, what coding we use for that. Um, however, we're going to come out with some tools that are going to help you do that much easier using tools that are already in WordPress. Um, and so I thought, well, why tell you about that when in you know, five, six months, you will have the capability of doing this with clicks and drags instead of with coding, OK? So um, however, the challenge for us um, in thinking about this is how do we, we, we see the need, we see the opportunity, how do we um, get something like this off the ground? Um, seeing that only about 5% of the Civi CRM community was using WordPress, we thought, well, maybe we wouldn't have a lot of support in trying to um, you know, do a fundraising campaign only within the Civi CRM community, but this has a much broader appeal in the WordPress community um, and the Civi CRM community. So how about, um, you know, how, how do we fund this project? How do we gain support and so forth? Um, development is costly and time consuming. How do we create a sustainable model? How do we, when we build something that extends Civi Serum into WordPress, how do we make sure that there's support there for it? How do we make sure that it's ongoing um, when someone has a question or that kind of a thing? How do we maintain mm -hmm. compatibility with the Civi Serum core? Because it's very important that when Civi Serum is updated, that everything works well, right? Um, and are people ready for this? Uh, we think that they are. Um, we're going to find out whether or not they are. Um, so Uku Logic is the product. Um, and just to tell you a little bit, um, to answer those questions, um, our thought was, well, let's pull from the broader community. Let's launch a crowdfunding campaign to see what kind of response we get. Uh, from the WordPress community, from the Civi Serum community. 
and let's, um, let's put out there an idea, uh, a direction, um, and a strategy and see if people buy into it. So that's where we're at with this project. Um, this was my initial experience with uh, setting up Civi CRM. So I was familiar with WordPress. I went on to the wiki and these are the installation instructions to the left, um, which gave me the information on how to install it, but I still needed information on how to set it up, you know, what was the best data strategy, um, how did Civi CRM work with imports and exports. So I bought this book over here, uh, 464 pages, read it to cover, cover to cover in a few days, um, and I went to AGH Strategies um, training uh, here in DC, which I highly recommend if you're in the area. Um, and in the past I have read this book as well, which is only 322 pages. Um, it was a little quicker and easier for me to read that book. So contrast that to the uh, expectation that WordPress users have of going into the plugin directory, being able to see how many downloads a plugin has had, what it's rated as, and click install now and it's there, right? Uh, maybe have to have a prompt that says go to the settings page and change this when you're done. Very different. And so that's one of our, um, one of our things that we're hoping to accomplish is to create a um, quick install whether someone has to upload the zip file or, you know, or, um, or, or whether we can get something listed in the directory, a quick install of our service and Civi CRM for WordPress. Because if you once you get familiar with installing Civi CRM in WordPress, um, it really is almost there. It's just that you have to do a few extra things that haven't been polished into an install yet. Um, one of the things that, and this is just a for instance, so let's say, um, so as an example of the interface um, and some of the little quirks of it, um, one of the things that always happens when I sit down with a um, trainee or a potential client and show them Civi CRM is they immediately go to contacts to try to look for a contact and there is, they, they stare at it for a few minutes and finally they're like, hmm, there's not a, not, that's not what I, you know, nothing that I'm looking for is on that list, right? Um, of course, you know, it doesn't take them long to train them to use the search box for that in every instance. Um, but one, uh, so we wanna create a simplified interface um, for end users so that they feel that they uh, can quickly understand it and don't have to train because a lot of nonprofit organizations have a lot of turnover and volunteers and that kind of thing and they need to be able to get people up to speed quickly. So um, we've developed this interface using the Civi Serum API um, which basically gives you, you know, a listing of your contacts below that can be sorted by um, organization, individuals, or households. Um, it gives you a quick overview of what, how many people you have in each of those categories. Um, and a search bar up here with an advanced search button if you want it. This actually is going to be um, kind of a, uh, a, a different interface. So it'll be using Civi CRM okay. um, to power it but it will have a um, different menu here on the left that you can access the information with. Um, and so you'll be able to, uh, you know, quick edit a contact, for instance. So let's say you wanted to change a tag or a group, you could just click on the quick edit and change it right in the list. Um, you can click advanced to see advanced search tools. Um, and then this is very consistent with a WordPress um, dashboard screen. So I think people are gonna be um, not feel confused by it, they're gonna feel familiar with it, is, is our hope. And it's very challenging to, to have uh, an interface that spans CMSs because they're all different, so. Um, and again, these features are still in development, um, so they um, are subject to change based on feedback from our audience, so. Um, you know, if you have a great idea of something that you think should be here that's not um, open to your feedback. Um, this uh, little spark line is um, indicating activity, so if they've had an activity in the past 90 days, you'll be able to see 
how active this contact is as opposed to the next one. So if they're flatlining, you know, maybe it's time to reach out to them or see what's going on. Um, this would be the single contact page. So once you click on a contact, um, you would have a simple display of data here, um, phone, email, website, address, and then you have um, basically a small view of contributions, events, memberships, notes, and settings here. And then each of these, if you were to click view on contributions, would change the bottom of the screen here. Or you could click this drop down to view those items. Um, additionally, this plus button here would be to add anything. So if you want to add an event registration, a contribution, a activity, you would just click on the plus to access a menu that would drop down to, to do those things. And again, all this is possible through the CiviSerum APIs. Um, none of this is, uh, to my knowledge, um, is being tied directly to a database table or field or anything like that. Um, and then, uh, again, um, when, when people, people who use WordPress heavily, um, your first experience is you come to the dashboard and there's modules there from all the different plugins. You get to pick and choose and rearrange them and so forth. So we would be adding uh, CIVI CRM um, information modules to the dashboard um, for activities, contributions, events, and probably a bunch more that you could just pick from and rearrange. And you could set that as default for a certain user role, for instance. So this project is a collaboration of us, um, RT Imagine, um, and Web Access, uh, which is a development company um, that serves the Civil UCRM community, um, has a, about 100 developers on their staff. Um, and together we formed this project, Uku Logic. So our strategy is to appeal to new audience um, in, broad, in the broader WordPress and nonprofit communities. Um, we really, our goal is not to um, necessarily impact people who are already using Civi CRM. We want to open up new opportunities for Civi CRM in other areas. Um, we want to fund development through a mixture of crowdfunding and our own investment dollars. Um, we are going to build this based on a freemium model, which is um, sort of uh, common in the WordPress community, um, where the core features will all be free. Uh, but if you wanted to add, say, an integration with um, Gravity Forms or MailChimp or something like that, you would pay a, fall, a small fee for that extension um, up front, and then you would be able to use it. Um, and that will help offset our support costs ongoing. Um, core tools are available to anyone, as I just said, uh, with an easy one-click install. And it's built using the Civi CRM API. Some of the planned features. Um, is uh, obviously out of, the, out of the gate, it's gonna be responsive because it's gonna be built in the WordPress dashboard user interface. And so you'll be able to log in and scroll through your contacts on your phone. It will look uh, very um, good on your phone. Uh, you'll be able to add activities on your phone. All that will be accessible right from um, the WordPress dashboard. Um, it's gonna have a simplified feature set to meet the broadest audience. Um, while minimizing administrative headaches. And that's gonna be the front end dashboard. They'll still be able to go to advance to, to get to Civi CRM dashboard as it is today. Um, out of the box, uh, it's gonna have beautiful front end forms for contacts. So every website has a contact form. Um, right now there is not a short code for contact form. Um, and so we're gonna have that be something that goes into that user's activity in Civi CRM. Um, event listings uh, is going to be a event listing widget on your site. Donation pages, um, e email newsletter sign up, and then in the future, um, not too distant future, premium feature interfaces with Gravity Forms for complex form creation, um, interface with WP views or something similar for front end display of data. So if you want to display a list of your members or a participant list for an event or that kind of thing, it would be something you could do, or you could even do, basically you could pick um, most any field and be able to display it on the front end with this. 
um, including uh, data fields. So for data visualization, say you had a survey and you wanted to display um, anonymous results um, in a map, say a data map or something like that, you could do that with this tool. Um, it's going to have seamless integration with WP user roles for granular security access. So instead of having two places where you manage user roles, Civi Serum and WordPress, you'll be able to manage everything from WordPress. Um, and the dashlets in the WordPress dashboard um, are going, like I said, we're going to have a bunch of them for the most important data that people are interested in seeing. So we do have uh, some of this work done already. Um, it's, it's by no means um, in beta yet. Um, however, I want to show you a little bit what we've done so far. All right, so this is, these are live um, dashlets on the WordPress dashboard. Um, so these are actual um, activities. Uh, these are actual contribution data in Civi CRM. And to prove it to you, if I go here to edit, oh wait, hold on. Oh, there we go, just taking some time. Um, as of right now, it takes you into the Civi CRM dashboard. So that's all connected. Once the further development is done, it will take you to the, f the front end dashboard. So you won't have that disparity between the interfaces. Um, we have uh, some work done on the contacts. Um, so you can see that this looks a lot like the concept that I showed you. Um, here's a listing of contacts uh, with their activities. I can click on, um, like I said, I can click on individual here to just sort out the individuals. Um, so there we are with the individuals. And it, it's pretty fast. Um, we're on a fairly slow internet connection and using the Civi Serum a API, we're just pulling that stuff in and out of Civi Serum very quickly. Um, so let's take a look at this um, contact here. So there's the contact um, single view. And so, um, you know, we've we didn't think we would have any development done on this at this point, um, but we have a few things done already in preparation of um, of the campaign, and we're really looking to have a beta of the core features done before the end of the year, so uh, we are moving pretty quickly on the project. So again, um, each of the categories will have its own dashboard very similar in appearance. Um, you can see the graph at the top says webinar conferences, fundraisers. So um, we'll probably be looking for some feedback uh, from our community of testers and so forth as to which categories are most um, important to people and are most, um, you know, have the broadest appeal and so forth. Can it be you can pick whatever ones you want? Yes, actually, um, it, that's, that is a possibility. We do want to keep the settings and setup very simple. So at this point, we'll have probably the most um, critical ones here, and then we'll have like other category that they could then um, select to view all, okay. all, all the other categories. So they could probably have an unlimited number of event categories. It would just be what shows up in this little graph as would be the most critical ones. <laughs> um, contribution reports, again, um, a, a nice um, quick view of, of the data, um, and then re reports would be able to be um, clicked on and exported and so forth. So
So uh, we kind of debated because initially I wasn't really going to talk about um, these tools that we had created. And so uh, my initial title was Beauty and the Beast, uh, WordPress and Civi CRM. So we kind of had a dilemma uh, because the um, metaphor sort of broke down. So we weren't sure if we should call it Beauty and Beauty and the Beast or Beauty and the More Beautiful Beast. Um, but in any case, this is, this is what we got. So if you are interested or invested in the Civi, uh, in the Civi CRM slash WordPress integration community, um, we really need your help in terms of feedback, in terms of funding, in terms of getting the word out there. And so um, whatever you can do, we would really appreciate it. Um, our website is ukulogic.com and um, we're using the hashtag free the causes for our crowdfunding event, which is happening tonight. Um, and so, you know, whether you just want to tweet something out to your friends or whatever, um, it would really help us out a lot. Um, you're all welcome back to our crowdfunding event tonight. It's at 6 p.m. in this room. Um, and we'll be doing some more information. Um, our team from Web Access will be here to help present. And um, so, yeah. And there will be food. Not, not light orders. There's going to be real food here, OK? And so. candy. <laughs> and candy, yes. All right. Any questions? Yes. Is this is this a, a user interface or is yes? That's a, that's basically what it is. Yep. And is it is it it's still being developed, so it hasn't gone through the CVCRM um, testing to make sure it's like CIVI approved. So the situation is that CIVI-CRM has an open API, so we're not actually uh, um, the only thing we may contribute back to CIVI-CRM, uh, which we would need their input and approval on, would be the install, the quick install for WordPress. All of, everything else is separate and it's just integrating, interfacing with the API at this point. Nate, yeah. two questions. Uh, for someone who is like at the fork of a decision tree and says, gosh, I, I know I want to use Civi CRM, uh, but I'm starting from scratch, so I have the luxury, quote unquote, of deciding what CMS I want to use, mm -hmm. Dr. Pennant. And they say, well, you know, I've, I'm hardcore WordPress, but ooh, it's a little ickier and more complicated than I thought. Um, shall I go, let's see, any, meeny, miny, moe, shall I go WordPress or Drupal? If, if they go the Drupal route, will they already have access to the level of elegance, if you will, in the interface that, that you've got here? No, uh, my understanding, uh, and I've seen some of this demonstrated, um, is that um, everything for Drupal uses the Civi Serum, the, the default Civi Serum interface, but has extensions for other functionalities. So for form building on the front end, it has something that ties into web forms and so forth, yeah. So I, I guess this is an, a, a, it's an important add-on question then. So, so what we would normally expect from Drupal, which is to say not a one minute install, but a whole framework. It's mm -hmm. not just a toolkit, it's a box with a toolkit in it that you in turn build what you need to build out of. So, so that same level of competency that's needed applies here as well? No. No, not so. Um, what our goal is, is to create um, a simplified tool set for the dashboard that um, addresses 90% of people's needs um, and may limit some of the customization available okay. um, for display on the front end. Uh, Civi is a full install on the back end, so they can do whatever they want there. Um, but what we're trying to do is say, when you click install and it's there and you install, you don't have to do anything else. Um, you don't have to go in and set up cron tasks. You don't have to go in and, you know, everything is part of that install. I probably should have Perhaps articulated it. my question better. I didn't do a good job with that. In other words, so there are some small trade-offs, but the advantages in terms of simplicity, ease of deployment, uh, overall, immensely better experience for the user would far offset any perceived trade-off. Yeah, and you have full Civi CRM on, you just hit advanced yep. and there's Civi CRM. So if you have someone, let's say you have a bookkeeper or something like that who's like, dude, I need this specific thing. You can train one person to do that, but then everybody else has this simplified interface. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. Yes. Can this be added as a to a, an already deployed 
Yes, absolutely. And that's how um, a lot of our initial testing is going to happen um, because we want people who are familiar, um, you know, to, with Civi Serum to see what that is. So it's, it's, it's strictly a layer on top of it. It does not affect your install and you don't have to do any import or exporting of data in order to utilize the tools. I, I'd like to say that I, um, I decided to go with WordPress uh, earlier this year in the hope that someone would come along and do what you're trying to do. All right. And, uh, you know, I guess it remains to be seen you know, if it works, if the business model works and everything else, but I'm glad that you're trying and, and uh, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, yeah. And do you need testers, I guess? Yes, absolutely. We will be we'll be looking for testers um, probably um, November, December is, is what our target is. And, um, and again, we've done a lot of research on the sustainability of the model and so forth. And I really think that, um, and we have yet to really get the market feedback on this, but I really think that there's something strong here. So. Yes. Are you planning on doing a software as a service version of this where you'll be hosting it? Um, Maybe down the road, um, or be, because it is a challenge um, that, um, number one, the, the first thing is, how do I install and set up? Number two, well, I only have a shared hosting platform, you know, can I still use this? And so what our thought is, and this is like, I probably shouldn't even be saying this, but anyway, what our thought is, is that um, we would host the database in a remote um, cloud scenario and feed through the API into the dashboards in WordPress. So their interface would be exactly the same. They just need to enter a key, um, you know, encryption key or whatever to connect to the cloud database. And then we would handle all the security, all the processing and all that. So, including um, if we add on uh, like mailing features and that kind of thing where we need uh, scheduled tasks and cron and stuff like that, we would want to you know, have that simplified interface, but have the processing be happening on our thing. Mm -hmm. But my under uh, from our discussion with developers and things like that, it's a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. They would want to simplify the structure of everything. Um, so it is not in the so near future. I mean, you talk about not having to set up a cron job. Obviously, there's functionality in Civi that really relies on it, a lot of which is pretty basic, like keeping numbers or statuses updated or obviously. Mm -hmm. Sending mail out if people are wanting to use that. So, Our the idea that those features would not be used by this set of clients, or our goal would be to tie into WP Cron, um, which doesn't happen on a. Um, it's not happen. It's not like timed. Um, it happens every time somebody hits the website. It's run. So, um, and I think that's how the new Drupal um, is as well. Um, so it would it would still run things, um, but it would not be to the level of um, you have to clarity. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't be precise, control, right? But you also wouldn't have to think about it. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a, it's somewhat of a trade-off. But if you have a website with a few hundred visitors a day, well, you're probably going to be fairly safe. So yes. Would you be able to? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. We're not building it to do that, no. Um, and currently, right now, the tool that we're building is um, going to be on single installs of Civi and WordPress, um, and then we're hoping to expand it to multi-site installs for um, larger associations and so forth. Yes? So the plugin that we bought, or something like that, yep. um, can be installed on an existing WordPress right now that has already a Civi CRM connection yes. for installing. Um, how stable is the demo version that you have now? I'm just kind of thinking S like Since it's only, an, well, it's not. We don't, we don't have a beta or anything yet. Um, by the end of the year, we should have. Okay. Um, and so you, you run no risk installing this on top of your current install because it's really just a visualization yeah. Yeah. layer. It's nothing that affects your database. So is it available? No. Nope. We, we are just, uh, what, what I showed you is what we have. Okay. Um, 
We are launching our crowdfunding campaign tonight, which we're hoping to gauge the market, um, you, know, uh, you know, how much people are interested in it, what, you know, whether they're getting excited about it. And then uh, based on that, we're going to continue our development of this stuff. Um, well, our goal for the first round is 18000 Yep. Is this going to be uh, where they can donate online as well? Or Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you can come back tonight, yeah. um, we will have that information up on the screen. If not, just go to ukulogic.com or um, on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere. Um, use the hashtag Free the Causes in the search and you'll be able to see all the information of our crowdfunding campaign website and everything like that. That, that URL is not um, available until the event goes live, so. Well, this is exciting. Thanks. Yeah, because uh, so, that's the one thing I noticed when we were using it, well, look at the screen, it's like, we got to put on the developer or the, you know, the programmer hat. How did they put it somewhere instead of where we're logically looking for it? Yeah. So yep. it would be nice to have that. And the, as far as the forms, Mm-hmm. As a way to control what the forms look like. Have you, um, have you used Gravity Forms no, in, in your insta yet. instance? No. Um, so we're going to have two forms. Gravity Forms is a paid tool. I think it's like $39 for one website and it's, you know, you can use it forever. If you want updates, you have to pay that yearly. Um, but um, we are going to have free um, fixed forms for contact, you know, contacts. Uh, forms and so forth, event listings. Um, but for the more advanced forms, we're going to develop an integration with Gravity Forms, um, which basically Gravity Forms handles all of your um, styling. You can move the fields here and there. You can add survey fields. You can Real do pretty much anything. Forms. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. So with the Gravity Forms, you'll be able to tap into the traditional logic that they have then? Yep, absolutely. Okay. And you can mix uh, civvy fields and non-civvy fields. Yep. Um, you can integrate uh, gravity. You can gravity forms has some limited e-commerce capabilities, um, so you could do some of that. Um, you could um, potentially in the future we may have an extension that integrates with WooCommerce if you want to have a full e-commerce site that then passes the um, the you know transactions back into civvy for your record keeping. So. Yeah. How, how much of the back end interface are you targeting for your layer? So um, creating a new online contribution page or creating a new event, which is more complex, those kind of things. Are those going to be you just go to the normal city interface for that, or are you going to try to address that? We are going to try to address. Um, we're going to try to address, um, back up a little here. Um, in, in the initial um, release, which is going to be completely free and ongoing, it's going to be free. Contacts, events, um, and basic contributions. So that includes not only looking at information about me going to an event, but also creating the event. Yeah. Um, we will probably be pairing back some of the options that are in the current um, city screens, um, but yeah. So. There are a lot of options in Civia, I'll just tell you. Yeah, <laughs> which, yeah, which I love. I mean, f for me as a, as a, you know, tech head person, I, I just, I really love that. But I think from an end user perspective, um, it becomes overwhelming um, when they are looking at their options to choose from. A lot of people are choosing Salesforce because they feel like it would be simpler to set up and, and use. Um, and of course, they find out down the road that, it, that it's also costly because they have to pay for add-ons and integrations. But that barrier to entry is low in their mind, so. Yeah. So if this is put in and, and that you upgrade Civi, this won't affect anything? So, uh, because this uses the Civi Serum API, um, that API is fairly stable, um, and so there really is not, you know, technically there should be no breakage between an upgrade of Civi Serum and. 
Um, however, we will be um, building a solution for doing quick up upgrades the same way that you do with a WordPress plugin. It will pop up at the top and say, hey, a new version is available. Would you like to install it? Click yes, it upgrades, and you're done. No using FTP to import you know, the plugin files and all that. Yep. All right, thanks. See you all tonight if you can make it. Um, if not, um, be sure to check our website out.